the floor, John. Just kidding. So, hi, Maz. Really lovely to meet you, and thank you so much for agreeing to have a chat with me. As I said to you, I'm now working with Linda and Zara and the team on Gold Arts Award, and I know that you were one of the first to do yes. Gold Arts Award at Eastbourne College. So, yes. how was that? That was quite a while ago now. Um, yeah, I, as I was sort of speaking to you before, I think it was about nine years ago now um, that I did my Gold Arts Award. I think I was in Lower Six at the time, so maybe even 10 years ago now. Um, and yeah, it's, a lot's changed, but, um, <laughs> you know, I'm still working in the, I'm working in the same sort of field um, in sort of fashion, which is why I did my Gold Arts Award in. Yeah, so what was your primary um, art form when you started the Gold Arts Award? What was the first thing you were like principally doing? Um, I was a textile student, so that's where I sort of came from. And then I really focused on sort of textiles and fashion. It was mainly fashion um, orientated. So all of my skills and all of the stuff that I had to do around that were were based based off of that. Yeah. So you were a Zara student then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're a Zara Cosgrove student. OK. And because Gold Arts would you extend your pr primary practice, what did you extend into? Do you remember? I can't remember. The, the only thing that really sticks in my mind from what I did at God's Art was I, the event that you kind of do. I don't know if that's yeah. still part of it. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I ran a charity fashion show, which is probably like was, you know, uh, the, the most memorable part of it. Um, organizing and bringing together that show. And I sort of like reached out to local um, sort of stores of sort of, uh, more boutique -y places in Eastbourne and Brighton. And just asked them if they wanted to give a few pieces away and then ran this all like through the school. And I think I did it in the Burley Centre and managed to get some catering off talking to some guys that also had a catering company in Eastbourne and managed to get hair and makeup sorted. And it was a really, really fun event. I remember it being very stressful and very busy, but that probably taught me quite a lot about sort of, um, you know, working in the fashion industry or all the different parts maybe are considered on, on a smaller scale, but, you know, that obviously gets scaled into like the real industry and um and work that too so yeah no that was definitely that's definitely part of gold arts award still which is the uh, leadership project that you do as part two so part one is where you go and review things and get to know the industry really and go and see fashion events or if fashion is your thing but obviously we have all the disciplines so painters and photographers so sam is our photographer person was she there was sam yeah 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 lovely Sam so um so Sam does photography and yeah I came in probably a couple of years after you left as they wanted to expand the delivery and I think the year I came in there were 42 people doing oh. gold mm -hmm. so if you were one of three yeah. <laughs> yeah a couple of you really were a trailblazer because a couple <laughs> of years later I, we had 42 um and it's ebbed and flowed from there I mean it's always been quite a big number though there's always it's a very attractive um EP extended learning project so why do you think you wanted to do it what was so interesting about gold arts that you thought oh yeah this this is for me um I think it's really about especially if you're in the arts side of things the way that education is kind of like delivered at school maybe you don't have an opportunity to really progress with sort of like specific projects or interests you know it's very like curriculum based so this gives you a bit more freedom to explore what you're interested in in sort of the arts and and get a bit more you know personal with it and approach it how you want to especially if you're interested in something like film you know maybe it's not something that you cover so much in your curriculum at school in in drama or whatever so it's just giving you a bit more you know, opportunity to focus in on that and get creative with it and then allows you to build a set of skills, interest, and it really helps you if you're, you know, then going to go on and apply to, to drama school or wherever it may be, because then you've got, you know, a bit, a bit of like backing behind you and a, a bit more sort of, you know, idea of the area that you want to go in or at least certainty about that. So, yeah. Yeah. When you did your, because uh, honestly, fashion shows are the thing you started a trend <laughs> like everyone loves to do a fashion show we're always like so what would your leadership project be would like to be fashion show okay <laughs> so now I know the person who set that all off <laughs> but we have done lots of other things subsequently we've done lots of installation exhibitions and we've done ma um, mag digital and printed magazines yeah there's quite a wide range of things people can do for leadership we've done a 
uh, writing and performing a play, as you say, a film. I think it's just so diverse, as you say, and it gives you some real life experience, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's exactly, as I said, it's getting out of the curriculum and just being a bit more creative in a field that maybe you're not in the classroom sort of, you know, yeah. uh, learning about, so definitely. Yeah, yeah. And so you did your, you you obviously in the textiles, when you left, and um, did you go to art school afterwards? Did it help you with that? Yeah, I did. So I went and did an art foundation um, at, in Brighton. Um, so I did that for a year. And then I went to fashion school. I went to um, Edinburgh, University of Edinburgh, and I went to the art college uh, within the university there. Um, and then I, yeah, I think I did three years there. I skipped one year because I did the, the foundation down in Brighton, but the foundation year was really, really good as well. Um, but yeah, so straight into that. <laughs> yeah, you would recommend doing a foundation year, would you? It's really fun. I think uh, also you've got like so much time like to to you know get serious and all that I think if you're going to go off and do something creative it's really important to get it right and I wasn't certain on doing it at first but I would definitely recommend it now because it's a lot you know it's less stressful than uni first year it allows you to really really think about what you want to do and it's going to be a lot more stressful if you're at university paying was it now nine and a half thousand pounds and you change your mind it's much easier to do that in a foundation course where the cost is like not, I think it's not free anymore, but it's not nearly as much. And you do have that freedom to sort of move around in the foundation course. Whereas, you know, if you're at university and you're already enrolled, you know, you, you need to make sure you're doing the right thing. And it's, it's really good. And you meet some amazing people. And, you know, I think it's a, a different experience, especially coming from somewhere like Eastbourne College and then going into an art school, you feel like you're suddenly surrounded by like a lot of you know the same person as you other creative people and it's a great space to to sort of make those initial connections so yeah. I would definitely definitely recommend that yeah. year <laughs> yeah I I agree I absolutely agree I think it's really important especially within the creative sector because there are so many avenues you could take that you just take it take a step back and take a bit of time to be sure before you launch off but you launched off fully fledged didn't you off up to Edinburgh and doing your um, uh, degree at fashion school and then tell us a bit about what happened after that so you you went out into the world how did that happen and how did you find your first job yeah um, I had a slightly different experience I worked a lot throughout of uni um, I was always in internships and stuff I became like um, a fashion week editor at magazine I think when I was in my third year of uni so I was sort of doing that and I would come down and just work from London um, and try and plan as best I could um, normally in like reading weeks and stuff and trying trying to sort of progress in my career and doing as many internships and quite annoyingly and you know it can happen in creators they are a lot of them are unpaid at first yeah. and I hope that will change but you know that's why I tried to do as many as I could whilst I was at uni so that when I came out I was like more sort of prepared for a job um, I started working at a modeling agency as well as a creative producer there and I was sort of responsible for a lot of models and managing them and um, so I really saw lots of different sides of the industry as well as doing a few design internships all sort of modeled between sort of every break and opportunity I had I was really getting involved in those um, and then when I was coming to my last year of uni I sort of took a slightly different route I, I dislocated my shoulder um, and so I stopped going into design and I got offered a role um to work for Maisie Williams um on the sort of back end of Game of Thrones and I worked with Maisie for about two years um so she basically sort of came to me and decided that she didn't want to um work with her same team anymore and she wanted someone that would maybe understand her style and what she wanted to achieve in fashion and so my main role was really fashion um styling and partnerships with her we did do there was a bit of acting stuff but there was a bit of a break after Game of Thrones so fortunately I wasn't thrown in the deep end there but um I got to travel with her uh to LA and New York and and Paris and basically sort of set up working relationships with really really big fashion brands um whether it was like Givenchy, Stella McCartney, Prada, whoever and it was very very exciting to you know be styling and helping her with that but also setting up partnerships there um mm. And it was really good, but uh, I sort of reflected over the lockdown and I was put on furlough and sort of thought about what it was that I wanted to do um, and decided that probably wasn't a long-term route for me. That was just something that I kind of 
ended up sort of getting into uh because I had dislocated my shoulder and had stepped back from design um so I I reflected on that and when I was at Edinburgh I got a scholarship um I applied for a scholarship for uh, sustainability research out in India so um I was very very lucky and it's very you know quite a good thing to go and look into at these universities if they have that because they didn't offer of it offer this sort of scholarship in the design school this was actually in the business school so I, a group of us wrote to the business school and applied for scholarships there and I think four of us went for my fashion course and we went over to India and we sort of studied the production line from cotton through to all the way through to Vogue India but meeting um, workers garment workers and everything and so I sort of reflected on the women that I had met in India that were kind of fighting for their jobs and really wanting to be there and you know just having the, the opportunity to work and being so grateful for it so sort of seeing the other side where you know celebrities are treated very differently in fashion and they get whatever they want and they don't have to do very much for it and yeah. you know um they're the people with the most money and they probably pay the least for anything or they don't pay anything for any you know for any sort of garments or anything like that so I just kind of reflected on that and decided that that's not where I wanted to go and I'd been doing a sustainability research and so I, uh, I sort of came together with um, some people in my network that I had met over the last few years, um, sort of when I was back at uni or when I was back in design and sort of looking at the sort of supply chain and decided to, to set up my own um, business, which I think I've been working on for about two years now. Um, but I think it's we've been live for just over a year and a half. Um, and so now I run consultancy um, and production for fashion brands um, so I do at the moment I'm doing some very fun stuff with Fiorici which is very exciting I'm running all of their prints they be, everything they do is basically print so I'm running all of that yeah. for them. Um, and I'm currently developing their knit supply chain going forwards um, and then there's quite a lot of exciting brands there's a brand called Jordan Hardinge that I work with that she's on TV show called Making the Cut which is an Amazon Prime um and I think she's done very very well through that the last person that won it set up three stores in New York so wow it's really good to be supporting that her as well but the idea for us is to just sort of help brands that maybe don't have the budget um to sort of carry out sustainability research or you know sort of make mm -hmm. it happen for them the there are sort of bigger brands that do have that budget and do have the team for that but it's not necessarily you know uh, accessible for everyone um so it's just sort of giving that resource to brands and helping them as much as we can on the surface with some stuff like for free but if they want to really like sort of change their supply chain being able to just work with them on a consultancy basis so that they can really change what they're doing um so that's really where I've gone with it so it's kind of all positive. yeah it's, yeah. it's you can still see the, <laughs> the thread though can't you you yeah. You can see that um, that independent working that you established and the finding the answers that you you established while you were still at school have really stood you in good stead to be a very resourceful woman yeah. and a business owner now and a very successful business owner. And it's you said while you were at uni and this is something that like really kind of hit hit home with me is that don't just do uni be looking outside be doing lots of other um, internships as best you can getting lots and lots of real life experience yeah. and do you offer internships in your business now is that something you're going to look to do we we haven't really done it so far I mean because my whole focus of my my brand is sort of sustainability and ethical based I I'm very much against all of the unpaid internship stuff. Good, so, I'm very happy to hear that. <laughs> um, I haven't, I haven't done it so far. We're currently actually coming to a big turning point in our business where we're, we're about to maybe move to King's Cross um, office. But, but depending on all of this move, uh, mm -hmm. really depends on on that. And it would be something I'd really love to offer. Um, but it for us, it just has to be. We have to make sure that we've got someone that we can like pay and that really, really understands it. And I think with what we do it can be so specialist it's not just necessarily somebody being keen on sustainability or knowing a bit about textiles is really need to like come together and it's really about that passion which you know I definitely built um <laughs> built from sort of being uh, under Zara's wing she she taught me everything about textiles and I've always said that to her uh, and I got very geeky with all my textile stuff when I was you know um at school studying studying um you know textile technology it was at the time there it was more technical um but 
yeah, I, one day I will, I will think about it more, but we just have to have the right resources to pay everyone. I think at the moment, yeah, we're a bit in the way. <laughs> yeah, no, I absolutely agree. And I, and I really um, value that answer that it's really important that you protect your business and mm. that you think about your business. Um, but it's also really important. I mean, I work in the arts <laughs> and, uh, you know, for me, having everyone paid properly is a really key thing as well. You know, I don't want anyone to be working under minimum wage and, and they should all, always be paid what they're worth. So that's really, that's really good to hear. And, and as, as you say, you know, it all stems back to those early days of um, being in that textile studio with Zara and yeah. getting very geeky around textiles. But there's obviously a lot more to you than just the textiles. There's the entrepreneurial businesswoman. Where do you think those entrepreneurial um, mm -hmm. business skills kind of, you know, and aptitude came about? Where do you... Yeah, I think I've always been really independent on that side of things and always very ambitious. I think that was part of the reason that I was one of the first like three people to do gold arts at, at Eastbourne. Um, I've always been that way and I've always had that drive for it. Um, I'm, I, I guess I'm, I'm naturally very good at networking, um, which everybody else at uni seemed to hate because they were like, how do you just meet someone? I met, um, it's like, you know, just I met someone who worked at Givenchy on the train one time just because we were delayed and I was chatting to them and you can really meet people anywhere you can um, and she ended up becoming my mentor uh, she's head of men's weather so mm -hmm. there was you know there's always people that you know you, you don't expect to, to have a connection with um, mm -hmm. but I, I the business side of things I think I really I mean everything business technical side of things I've really learned as I've gone um, and had to sort of dive in the deep end but because I had so much ambition and clear vision about what I wanted to provide and like there are quite a lot of unique things that we provide as our consultancy um and I just really wanted to like drive that home so I think once I had that you know then it, I've just been sort of motivated to to, to get it started but I don't yeah. know where it maybe came from um other than just being a generally very ambitious person so do your parents run their own businesses they do now they didn't <laughs> they, they started exactly the same time as me so uh -huh. it was quite nice because they they sort of had a reflect of COVID as well and sort of decided to start their own business, but we did it at the same time. So it was quite nice when me and my mum were setting up things together to, to sort yeah. of be like, have you done? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. How does that work? <laughs> yeah. And she's always talking me through like all of my random tax returns and all of the sort of scary business stuff that I don't like to think about. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, we all, that The business side and doing the, your tax returns on time. Um, is really important otherwise yeah. they do fine you or charge you interest and I think that's a yeah that's a life lesson isn't it yeah and it, it gets it gets easier I think you know I think it was just my first year of business I was yeah. like oh, but, you know yeah going? just doing it just getting in and doing it like you say mm -hmm. when you were doing your gold arts award and you decided you were going to do the fashion show and you just went out and spoke to shops and spoke to people and asked them if they would help you what's the worst that can happen yeah, exactly. I think that you've got to kind of just like, you know, engage with that really and try as mm. much as possible because so much about of like, especially, I mean, fashion and all creative industries is really a lot about like who you know. And that doesn't come from, I think a lot of people will talk about that quite negatively, but actually like you make your own connections as well. Like it's a lot of people sort of think of it's like, well, like what you know, it's who you know. But like, and I think there's those negative context around that, thinking like, oh, if you come and your parents maybe have links about that, but it's actually not about that. People do want to work with you as an individual and as a creative person. Um, my parents work in like medical side of things, so absolutely nothing to do with sort of like creative um, industry at all. So everything that I did, I, I mean, I was like 18 or something and I just decided to like get some really cool clothes and cut my hair and I, I flew to Paris and um with a friend and we managed to talk our way into shows by like styling ourselves really cool um and we were sitting at like front row acne studios within like I don't know like five hours of being there um just you know from being really confident and that's it's not easy to do but yeah. um but yeah I mean just having the confidence to go and do those things and speak to people it's it's really really essential I think yeah in the creative industries I think as you say I would absolutely validate it's it's who you know but it's not about the network that you're given it's about the network that you create for yourself because people have a great deal of respect for confidence and no one's born with confidence 
you yeah. you grow confidence the more you do it the first time you get into the show and they put you in the front row then you think well I can do that so I can do that again <laughs> and you have another go and yeah. absolutely is uh, you know you grow that confidence through action don't you and you take yeah. the actions and you grow the confidence and I think that you stand as a, an incredibly good example of that and um yes thank you for taking the time to share your journey and your thoughts with me and I will obviously share hopefully everyone who's watching this um mm -hmm. all the students who are coming up um this year and the years back and back because obviously mm -hmm. we're, we've got this recorded now so in future years people will be able to listen and be inspired by what you've achieved and by then you, you I'm sure you will be very well known and people will be uh, referring to you and your I mean your clothes are stunning and as I said to you um, I saw on your Instagram now you'll have to tell people what your Instagram um, uh, handle is so that people can follow you because it's not um, Maz Smith it's your fashion brand name isn't it yeah so um, it's SE Tech so it's about ESCE dot tex i think is the handle yeah. um, and uh well that just sort of that's all the production all the clothing we've been working on it is exciting because even though i work in this side of things we still work all the way down to the photo shoots and the fashion week and i'm going to the previews of all the fashion week stuff i think 15 16 then fashion week starts on like the 19th so starting to go to all the previews for the designers that we've been working with and there should be great great stuff to, to yeah, see so yeah. i love fashion week um <laughs> is it at some I've been been to Fashion Week at Somerset House before. They now. used to do a lot more at Somerset House because that's the home of the BFCU now. Um, but I'm the, my first show is the Jimmy Choo Academy, um, and I think Jimmy Choo is hosting some party there afterwards. So <gasps> yes, exciting. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean it can kind of be everywhere because people sort of like to do their pop ups. There's a lot more going on at the Truman Brewery with like New Gen. And stuff as well so um yeah it's a very busy week I'm actually happy to be less involved in it now when see designers do stuff because when you're running around as a journalist or whatever you can be involved in but there's loads of opportunities for anyone in fashion to be a dresser journalist front of house get involved in all of that kind of stuff because you get to see some really fun things as well if you don't get an opportunity at a brand in design you know there's still loads of areas that you can get involved with the PR agencies or whoever it may be yeah uh, yeah just reach just reach out and see what's what what's on offer absolutely yeah. um ask yeah. just keep asking yeah, yeah. very nicely and politely <laughs> and style yourself really well <laughs> yeah. it's it's important to like write a good email and not keep someone for too long and and you know follow up when it's appropriate and and just you know be like kind of courteous about that kind of thing and just you know aware of their time if it's fashion week they're going to be busy so absolutely um, that's incredibly good advice is yeah. that you know I think politeness and a short email and being respectful and humble about the fact that this person is probably very busy but don't don't because they don't reply don't think that that's a no still yeah. have you know still be polite but you can go yeah. back and ask oh yeah. I'm just following up on that I think you know I will put my hand up so sometimes I miss an email yeah. and um you know it's not deliberate and it's not personal it just I missed yeah. it it was a busy it was a busy week um so yeah always follow up I'm always telling my kids that I was like you haven't had a reply follow up just send a follow-up email Absolutely. just be very polite Absolutely. I nearly missed my I had an assistant for two years now and I nearly missed her application until she followed up because I had had so many come through that I'd missed hers and, and in fact she's been with me for two years now it's been great so you know um, there you go she was she was the right one for the job and you know after you have an interview as well it's always really good to follow up after that and just thank them for their time and just you know uh, yeah. and then patiently wait <laughs> yeah exactly thank you very much because it is it does you know it takes energy and time to interview people yeah. brilliant thank you so much that's absolutely fantastic I'm very very jealous about your forthcoming <laughs> couple of weeks at fashion week although I'm going to Paris to the Paris, new Paris plus art fair so <laughs> So I'm getting a bit of, of the uh, fashion vibe, but not quite as much as you. So yeah. thank you so much, um, Maz. And it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, no worries at all. And um, if you need anything, yeah. <laughs>